live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live covering VMworld 2017, day two of coverage. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host Stu Miniman. We've had a great morning on the main stage, Michael Dell, Pat Gelsinger, Google, et cetera. We're excited to be joined by Dr. Sudhir, Sudhir Srinivasan, the CTO of Dell EMC Storage. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, thanks for having me. We're excited to have you here. So, you were an EMC guy, we talked about that. When people think of Dell, think they think of well, maybe used to PCs when they think of EMC, they think of storage arrays. Talk to us about you know, one year post combination almost. How has your customer's perception changed? What have you heard in the last year? Sure, yeah, no, it's been a pretty dramatic change, I would say, um, in the sense of about a year ago when the deal was, uh, or actually two years ago when the, the, uh, the deal was first announced that it would, it would be happening, there was a lot of skepticism in the customer base, obviously, around, hey, what does this mean? How's it going to come together? I think a year into it, people started to see some initial signs of better together. And now a year later, we're seeing dramatic, dramatic uh, positive energy and feedback from customer base on how, when they're actually seeing the products and solutions coming together in a combined solution. I think that's, I mean, we used to joke in the, in the old days where our products, you know, EMC's got our portfolio and, um, our products would only come together on the PO. That was the, the common joke inside. <laughs> and I think that perception is changing quite a lot now. Yeah, yeah. Sudhir, bring us into the storage group, because it was one that, you know, if you look, there were lots of places where there were no overlaps. Yeah. Storage, there was a long partnership between Dell and EMC, then Dell had acquired a couple of companies. Yep. EMC, as you said, already had a very large portfolio, so bring us inside a little bit, especially kind of with your, uh, you know, your, your CTO, your you technologist. Have. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, wh how, how do we, what are those lenses you look through, and, and where are we into you know, things coming together? Sure, so. I think it's a great question, you know, uh, and thank you, because uh, one of the things that people miss is that the portfolio strategy is a conscious strategy, right? It is really hard to cover the entire spectrum of workloads, use cases, with a single uh, widget, if you will. And a lot of our competitors will, will try to convince customers of that, and they're finding that out themselves, that it's really hard to cover that gamut. So I think, fundamentally, first and foremost, the portfolio strategy is very important. Now, that said, it is, I'll acknowledge and I'll admit that there is per perhaps more in the portfolio right now than, than perhaps is needed. And so that in fact is one of our first, um, uh, one of our big priorities for this year is to, to, to simplify the portfolio because it's confusing for our customers. And so we're definitely working towards that. Um, you'll see that roll out starting next year and then over the next few years. So on that front, and sort of maybe weeding things out to simplify. From an innovation perspective, Michael Dell also talked on main stage this morning about yeah. the importance of customer innovation, but I'd love to understand how, if you can take us kind of more through that, how is Dell EMC innovating internally so that you can be leaders in innovation? Yeah, externally? that's a great question. It's a, it's, it's a great question because, you know, when you have a multi-billion dollar business, everybody assumes it's really, really hard to innovate, and it is, right? There's no question because you've got a a big business to sustain. Now, but the, I, I completely agree with Michael, what he said on stage and what he said to us privately, which is, um, in fact, Dick Egan used to say the same thing, uh, founder of EMC, was uh, that if there's one thing that you, you should be comfortable with is change, because this industry is changing like crazy. And I've been in the industry now for what, uh, coming up on 20 years? Seen a lot, you know, from FDDI to where we are today. And I'm still constantly amazed by how much change is going on even now. So, we do believe in change. We're, we believe in actually innovating constantly. And Jeff Boudreau, one of my, my manager, he's a big believer in change as well. We're working on a number of innovations internally, organic innovations, big innovations. I can't tell you much about that today, but we'll get, we'll hopefully, you know, as we get closer to next year, we'll be able to talk more about it. That said, we're innovating on our existing products as well. We've refreshed our entire portfolio at Dell EMC World earlier this year. At um, VMworld just now, we announced our availability of our X2 platform, which is the next generation of the Extreme IO platform. So we're constantly innovating, and as a result, you, you know, it's more of a rolling thunder as opposed to like a big bang. 
Yeah, right, yeah. So. Sudhir, I kind of look at it, there's kind of two ways that things are changing a lot in storage. Number yeah. one, there's there's kind of the, the underneath pieces. So yeah. you, you talked about going from FDDI, uh, you know, when we saw from, from disk to flash where EMC was, right. uh, you know, early on uh, that, that kind of reemergence of flash after a couple of decades of it uh, be, be, being uh, you know, not used for yep. a while. Uh, we've got things like NVMe and NVMe over fabric coming out. So we're going to start there. Maybe I want to talk after. There's kind of the, the operating model on how we change things because we yeah. went converged and cloud and all those. But uh, on some of those underlying pieces, which I, I know keep the storage people kind of really engaged, yeah. you know, where are we today with some of those transitions? What are some of the things that you're looking at over yeah. the next kind of That's 12, 24, 36 terrific. months? Terrific. I mean, I see th uh, actually three vectors of change uh, impacting the storage business, uh, in impacting us. One is the media, like you said, there's NVMe, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, there's actually a whole bunch of stuff beyond NVMe, right? Storage class memory, persistent memory coming out. The second set of things is um, consumption models, what we call consumption model round. Whether it's a cloud consumption model, where if you think of cloud actually more as a consumption model as opposed to a destination. And software defined is a big thing. I think that's going to dramatically change the game, especially when you combine it with things like persistent memory. And then the third thing I think is is the new wave of applications as well. Yeah, yeah. That's generating a whole new class of data that has a whole new set of requirements. For example, real-time streaming analytics, right? That's that changes the you can't deal with block and file and object in those in those worlds. You're dealing with new semantics. So those are some of the vectors we're looking at in terms okay, of so, how. So let, let's let's start with kind of the low level, the media, and sure. uh, you know some of those things. Right, that you know what is data, what is memory, you know all, right. all those things blurring. Where you know I hear there seems to be uh, you know so many people you know NVMe, NVMe, NVMe over NVMe fabric NVMe. seems to be. Hey, look. This, so let, let me yeah. let me hit that off right up front. Right. So it was ten years ago that Dell and EMC independently before obviously we were in one company actually co-founded the consortium that invented NVMe. So we saw the need of this technology, uh, the, the limitations of SAS and SATA 10 years ago. We saw this coming, and we helped drive the, the standards, including the NVMe over fabric standard. And that's like well before some of these companies that are claiming NVMe today are, were actually even born. So NVMe to me is a journey, right? There's the, uh, there's the, uh, the, the bus, it's changing from the SAS bus to the NVMe bus. That's one part. Then there's the media that stands behind the, the NVMe transport. Things like uh, 3D crosspoint that are starting to come out. And then even beyond that, when you get to really persistent memory type of uh, applications. So we, are, we see this as a journey. We're going to be rolling out NVMe in all our products across the entire portfolio starting this year, later this year. Um, for first, today, Scale.io already supports NVMe devices in 14G. Yeah. So we're gonna, you're going to see that. Yeah, I, I guess my follow-up, just to dig in a little deeper, because when we got the CTO, you, you got to dig down. Sure. Um, there were some when Flash came out, they were like, oh yeah, whatever, I'm going to throw a couple of percentage in. Well, we saw it. Flash greatly changed architectures. It changed some of those application Absolutely. considerations, uh, especially you know my, uh, Wikibon's David Floyer has been beating on yeah. you know let's really look at databases. Let's do this. Right. NVMe is it extension and kind of evolution, or will this be a similar revolution to what we I saw with Flash? I think it's a Flash? similar revolution. Okay, uh, it's a similar but perhaps less of a uh, quantum leap, I would say. Okay. And the reason is because you're you're going from like tens of milliseconds or milliseconds of latency with spinning media to sub-millisecond with flash. Now you're going from sub-millisecond to sub-sub-millisecond, but it, you know, it's getting diminishing. I think where you're going to see a lot of uh, um, uh, dramatic is as, it's, it's more on the latency as you get, as the applications get closer and closer to, to the servers, right? So I think you're going to see a lot of, uh, a pretty dramatic change um, in that space. Speaking of change and revolution, um, the three vectors that you talked about, media, consumption models, this new wave of applications, how, as CTO, are you seeing the buyer's journey change as a result that's of great. these vectors? So that's actually part two of the question that Stu was just asking is, while I agree that it's going to be a revolution, what I've also seen in 20 years is that these things don't happen instantly. Yes, Flash, is, flash was a big change, but even today, over 40, 50% 40, of our revenues still come from hybrid systems, mixed flash and So these things take time, right? Um, so customers are taking leaps. I, I would say I'm seeing a spread of the early adopters, and the, the, we're probably in the big 
medium and the big uh, the bell curve right now and then there's some laggards as well that are still buying you know pure HDD only systems. Do you so see a difference there, sorry, with respect to industries, like maybe healthcare or financial services that are early adopters? Definitely, I think there's industries and there's also a size of customer, right? The bigger the customer, the more uh, uh, eager we see they are in doing this digital transformation. So um, we're seeing a lot of them going all in on software defined, right? So we're definitely seeing that shift from um, buying purpose-built arrays to, to software defined. Now it's not going to be instantaneous again, it's going to be over many years. Similarly in the mid-range and below, we're seeing a shift from um, modular systems to hyper-converged systems as well. So we're seeing that as well. We're seeing a lot of shift from purely on-prem to a, a hybrid solution of on-prem plus cloud. So all of our products are now attaching to the cloud as well. So we're definitely seeing all of these uh, transitions. When it, when it comes to the cloud native piece, there there's some that have said, well, it's kind of going to be kind of a completely different way of doing things, mm -hmm. really focused on the, the the developers, and won't that just live in the public cloud, or you know, will SaaS applications, you know, be, be, be where a lot, a lot of those live? Ah. So, you know, what, what what do you say to the the you know, <laughs> you've improved media, you've improved consumption models, but. Uh, maybe they're just, you know, it, it's yeah. easier for me not to own some of these pieces. I, you know, what the company, uh, you know, small company, I don't want to deal with infrastructure right. at all. Uh, let me, you know, just you, you, let me, yeah, it. just get yeah, out no, of that sorry, piece that's, of it. That's another great, you know. great question. What we are seeing, I would say, is, uh, is definitely some of that, especially as you said, in the smaller companies, it's easy for them to get started, right? With minimal initial uh, expenses, they can get started in the public cloud, so we definitely see that. Uh, but as you get larger, what we're seeing is the economics of running everything in the cloud on a sustain and sustained basis just don't work out, right? You, it's, it's much more cost effective to run things on-prem. So I think for cost reasons when you're running over an ex or sustained operations, as well as for security reasons, we're still seeing a lot of hesitation in, especially as you get to the higher end of the market, people are concerned, especially with all the breaches and things like that, that they're concerned about where their assets are. So we actually at uh, Dell Technologies, I would say, and, and, and Dell EMC in particular, we're seeing a pretty significant opportunity propping up where customers want to run on-prem data centers just like the cloud. And that's where things like software-defined storage become really important because, hey, the public clouds are running all software-defined. That's their one of the secrets to their agility and speed. Why can't we have that on-prem and we actually Absolutely see uh, see that. In fact, today's announcement of PKS is right on them on the money for that. So we're here at VMworld. Um, with respect to that, seeing more customers want to bring things on prem, maybe kind of the true private cloud that Wikibon's been talking about. Um, what are you guys doing now with VMware to align that? We've heard a number of things about yesterday with AWS, you mentioned Pivotal today, Google. Yeah. Um, what's going on today with Dell EMC and VMware to help customers really build an, a solid on-prem solution? Yeah, so I think Pivotal is certainly a key piece of that. Pivotal VMware, so, so the whole VMware Cloud Foundation Cloud uh, Suite is, is, a, is a key piece of that. Um, the, the integration with PCF is I think going to be very key because what customers need especially the, uh, the traditional customers, if you will, who uh, don't quite have the expertise yet to build cloud native applications. They need a platform, not just a infrastructure. So I think that's why Pivotal is very important. And we're working very closely with, and as Dell EMC, we're working closely with both of those partners in, uh, in delivering those solutions. VxRail is a good example of that. Right? VxRail, VxRack are, are good examples of the two technologies coming together. Um, and so, that, those are the kinds of things, I think that's where software-defined storage, you'll see a lot more integration between e Dell EMC's software-defined portfolio with the, uh, the VMware and Pivotal uh, ecosystems. So, the storage group, you've, you've talked about you have a lot of options. We've yeah. been talking about software-defined storage, how that you know, is driving a lot of the change there, uh, it gives a lot of flexibility there. How does the storage team look at things like VMAX and Extreme I.O. compared to the, 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 the software-defined storage these days? Yeah, so I think we, we, so we have, I, don't, I, I presume everybody's seen the, the famous chart where there's the, 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 the traditional infrastructure and then there's the, the cloud native, the new world, and that's a transition that's going to happen and we think it's going to be a very long transition, right? Mainframes are not dead. 
right? So they're still alive. And there's a reason, because people are running their absolute mission critical applications on those those infrastructures. So we think there's there's definitely going to be a place for both. And it isn't all or nothing. And that's, I think, going back to innovation, your question about it, where is Dell EMC innovating? We're the only company that's actually embracing these, these changes, this transition to software defined, right? Where with, with products like ECS and Scale.io and so on and so forth. So we see that the transitions will happen slowly, but there's going to be a lot of um, opportunity for highly reliable, you know, six, seven, nines reliable infrastructure based on purpose-built infrastructure. As yeah, uh, it definitely uh, matches a lot of, uh, as you said, the, the true private cloud report that we have on Wikibon. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Sudhir, for joining us on theCUBE. We, we now uh, bring you into the CUBE alumni, the thank illustrious CUBE much. alumni category. Glad to be here. And thank you for sharing your insights as CTO on, on what you're doing with customers and innovation. Thank you very much. And we want to thank you for watching. I'm Lisa Martin for my co-host Stu Miniman. We are live covering day two of VMworld 2017 from Las Vegas. Stick around, we will be right back.